Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for this video where I walk you through each of the software tools that I use for indie game development and some of the hardware that I consider important as well. This toolkit that I use has stayed consistent throughout my year and a half long experience as a hobbyist game developer, which started with the creation of simple mobile games and has now morphed into the development of more complex projects that primarily target PC and console. I chose each of these pieces of software because I perceive them to have a high ratio of value to cost. And for that reason, I hope that this toolkit is accessible to many of you watching this video. On top of all that, I think it's important to point out that I'm not making this video because I think the set of tools that I use is perfect and will necessarily be a perfect fit for you. Rather, I want to provide information in response to all the questions I get about the tools I show in my devlogs. At the end of the day, I recommend doing some research on these tools as well as other alternatives to find what works best for you. To develop artwork for my games, I have relied on two excellent pieces of software. As I began learning to create pixel art, I found myself using the Pixaki app for iOS almost daily. Combined with an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil, Pixaki proved to be an amazing and intuitive tool for practicing pixel art on the go. Now, I realize the barrier of an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil does not exactly make this approach accessible for many folks, but if you have the hardware, I think Pixaki is well worth the $25 one-time purchase price. It's been an invaluable tool to help me learn pixel art, and I ultimately relied solely on this piece of software when creating all the artwork for my first two mobile games. As I started to work on games requiring pixel art with a bit more complexity, I have completely fallen in love with a tool called Asprite. Asprite is a fully featured pixel art editor for PC and Mac. There are plenty of videos out there that give an in-depth review of this software, but at a high level I enjoy the robust set of hotkeys, animation tools, and the ease of exporting my work, alongside a bunch of other great features. I picked up Asprite on Steam for the very fair price of $15, but if that's not an option, Asprite provides a guide on their GitHub page for how to download and compile the source code yourself for personal use. As a final note, if you have picked up Asprite and need some help getting started, I wholeheartedly recommend a channel called Mortmort. He is extremely knowledgeable about both pixel art and Asprite, and I have him to thank for nearly everything I've learned about pixel art so far. Next we'll make a quick stop at the tools I use for sound. This is a short and incomplete list, mostly because I've yet to create any music or complex sound effects for my games. For recording and manipulating sounds from a microphone, I use a free program called Audacity. This is a piece of software of which I have only really skimmed the surface, but it has proven very useful for capturing and trimming sound effects from my Blue Yeti microphone or for recording my voice. For my first mobile game, I actually did create a musical component in the form of a chord progression that played upon certain actions performed in quick succession. For this, I use GarageBand on my MacBook to record and export these chord progressions. I personally use an inexpensive MIDI controller with GarageBand, but you can accomplish the exact same thing with the built-in virtual instruments. And I think it's worth noting that even if you don't have a MacBook, if you still have either an iPad or an iPhone, you still have access to GarageBand. It's just been a super helpful tool for me so far, and it's something I'll definitely be spending more time with as I eventually work on creating music for my games. The answer to which tools may be best for writing code for video games largely depends on what engine, framework, or general toolkit you're using to build your game. In my case, I'm currently focused on development with the Unity engine, so I'll be sharing the tool I use to write c -sharp code for Unity. My clear choice here is Visual Studio Code. Not Visual Studio, but Visual Studio Code. And even though they're both free code editing tools provided by Microsoft, there really are some big differences between the two. Unity Hub provides the option to download Visual Studio with each new version of Unity that comes out. There's nothing wrong with doing this. Visual Studio works perfectly well with Unity right out of the box. That said, Visual Studio does have some downsides for me. Visual Studio is a fully-fledged IDE built for developing apps for Windows, the web, and plenty of other platforms. Because it's an IDE, it comes with a ton of functionality out of the box, which for me just makes it feel a little bit clunky since there's a bunch of stuff in there that I don't really need or ever use. That's where Visual Studio Code comes in. VS Code is not an IDE, but instead a very extensible text editor, much more along the lines of something like Atom or Sublime Text. It's lightweight, it loads fast, and it's a first-class citizen on both Windows and Mac, which I can't say about Visual Studio. 
Using the guide provided by Microsoft, you can easily configure VS Code to work with Unity and provide features like IntelliSense, code coloration, debugging, and much more. The resulting experience is fast, responsive, cross-platform, and honestly, pretty infinitely customizable with the use of extensions. After switching to VS Code, I don't think I'll ever look back. The question I definitely get most often in all the comments of my devlogs is, what is that tool that he uses for planning? This tool is called Trello, and it's amazing. You can use Trello on the web, PC, Mac, iOS, and Android, and best of all, it's free. I've used Trello for every single indie game project I've worked on. It's a great place to plan your development tasks, whether it be for the next hour, week, month, or beyond. I also think it's a great place to quickly capture feedback and convert that into development tasks. If you don't currently use a tool for planning out your development or whatever you're using right now isn't working for you, I definitely recommend giving Trello a shot. You can start out super simple with lists just for your backlog, to-dos, in-progress, and completed tasks. For more ambitious projects, I've started bucketing things out into larger milestones, and I now use labels to track the status of individual items. I won't go into too much more detail now, but if you'd like to see more guidance on using Trello, let me know in the comments and I can work on making a video about that. Now this isn't meant to be a video to discuss or compare game engines, but at the same time I'd be remiss not to mention the one piece of software that actually enables me to create games. At this point in my indie game development journey, I'm focusing my efforts on Unity development. Unity really has everything I need. It's free for personal use, has one of if not the largest feature sets of any commercial engine, and it has a robust community surrounding it to help spread knowledge. That being said, I certainly don't think you should just use Unity because I do. I've also spent a bunch of time with both Godot and Monogame, which are excellent, free, open source alternatives. My suggestion is to spend a little bit of time researching what engine or framework might work best for you, but don't spend too much time on it. At the end of the day, the most important thing is to pick something and start creating. All right, looking back on everything I just went through, let's put the whole package together. If you choose to use Asprite for art, GarageBand and Audacity for music and sound, Visual Studio Code for development, Unity as a game engine, and Trello for planning your project, you'd have a one-time cost of $15. If you chose to compile Asprite yourself, this toolkit would cost you nothing. I hope this video was a helpful starting point to anyone trying to get started with game development. If it was helpful, definitely consider leaving a thumbs, it helps out the channel a bunch. In the meantime, good luck on whatever you're out there creating, and I'll see you in the next video.